It's so clear that virtual production is the future of the film industry. A few years ago, I got the chance to see the stage that Mandalorian was shot at, and immediately as director was like, oh boy, we need to get the rest of Canada on board with this. And so very quickly, I got to work at the Directors Guild, trying to make sure that we can train our directors and all the different people that the Guild represents to learn how to use this technology. Virtual Production Academy helped design and host virtual production workshop with DGC. We got to work with eight directors to shoot eight short films with four of our environments. The VPA helped design a crash course that would onboard these directors and DOPs uh, so that they are familiar with the technology and can hit the ground running as fast as they can. It was important for Pixelmono to get involved with the DGC workshop because it, we needed to demonstrate to the industry and to new filmmakers that virtual production is an accessible tool for all creators and that we had a chance to demonstrate how fun and how truly amazing virtual production can be for a production. This weekend with the DGC, trying to demystify the technology for filmmakers across the board. And right now, a lot of this technology is, is used in sort of these top tier productions, which is really fantastic. Uh, of course, William F. White and Pixelmundo have the opportunity to, to supply these big top tier shows, but we want to make sure everybody can benefit from this technology and, and gets hands on with it and gets experience with it. And that's really what we're, we're doing here this weekend. Uh, so this weekend was true test for virtual production and trying to do as many environments as we can cram in. We had eight directors over two days, uh, eight different short films, and just trying to load up each environment, blend as fast as we possibly can and film as many shots as possible. When I walked into this studio and I saw <laughs> the environment on that wall, it was just mind-blowing. The wall is basically a digital set that becomes, instead of green screen, it becomes real. And it's hard for you to tell where does the physical world ends and the digital begins. And this is crazy. Unbelievable excitement because it's a brand new world. To actually be in it, and learning from day one. There were just so many new things that I could learn. It's like on the one hand for me, early Hollywood days with the backdrop taken to an ultimately incredible new level. So it's a backdrop that is real in every possible way and it fools the eye. So it's really like magic. There's so much to love about working in this capacity because you have latitude to do things you just don't have on set, there's um, efficiencies that come with how you light. And immediacy too, you don't have to wait if there's a visual effects component, it's right there. So as a visual artist, you can see what you're doing in real time and so often in film we don't get that. So to know the kind of worlds that are no longer off limits and that are within the scope of being able to be executed as long as we have these artists and technicians, anything you can think can be developed, can be modified, can be tweaked to feel that freedom. I think writers really need to understand how powerful and how magic this can be so that their imaginations can be freed. Right now my head is writing ideas already and the things that can be done and I'm thinking of things that I've done in the past and I'm wondering, oh, if I just had this, then I would have, you know, been able to do it this way. So a lot can be done with this, a lot, a lot, a lot. Everything is possible with this technology. Everything is possible. Canadian directors have been making their mark on the world for years with their talent, and now we are going to be making the mark with our experience in virtual production. We really are at the forefront of this virtual revolution, and it is so exciting to be a part of. The adjustments for this new technology, you now have an asset on the wall and the, and the wall wraps around. And it, along with the, the ceiling as well, provide a lot of ambience. And that ambience matches your background. So in traditional, you would have a set and you would be bringing sunlight through windows and you'd be lighting a backdrop outside. You'd be setting your ambience inside a key light. And now you, you place your actor in the middle and you're actually, the actor is being influenced 
by the wall itself. And it's a matter of looking, okay, well, where in, within the asset, where's the, where's the key coming from? And then do I have to blend and bring a little bit more of that in? As the cinematographer, your job is to sort of make the set piece that's been built in the foreground merge into the rendered back background that's there. But the big surprise for me was the fact that you do that to a certain point and then the people behind the scenes, they meet you and then they start to blend it because you might have a thing where the, the ground surface that you have is meeting the back screen and we've done all we can to make it look like it belongs there, but you go, it still doesn't match, but they have tools where they can then go in and just tweak that part of it and merge it in. So they had a lot of, they had a lot of tricks up their sleeve. This will absolutely be a necessity from, from a standpoint of it being a director of photography, from being an art director, from being a camera operator, from being a director, from being a writer, that uh, you will need this and you will need to understand this technology, understand the process. And then once you understand the process, then you can, then you can make the decisions creatively on, which way, on what you can do. The same massive, creative, immersive environments that you'd wanted to create all along, now you can actually do it but at the highest quality, real-time fidelity that only could be dreamed of back in the day. Like we had to think about how our elements would work in that virtual field. So it gave me something else to think about rather than just we're building a set, we're, we're building part of the set, the foreground with the actors interact, their world. You know, it's, it's always a space for actors. You're, you're creating a space for actors to work. And that's why our physical elements are really important with the digital technology. The actors still need to feel like they're in the space and they need to feel that for their characters. Mind blowing. Just coming in the room right off the top and seeing that huge, I'm calling it a screen even though that's not what it is. Just seeing the environment, massive obviously, and seeing the scope of it. And then at one point I went around back and had a look. What actually makes this thing tick? And it was like, peeling back the curtain for Dorothy or the Matrix, one of those things. This definitely beats working with dot and a green screen. You do not have to use your imagination a lot. You get into character much faster than that. That is definitely. Even when you have a scenario where the furniture is there, this is more because you can see further. The experience as an actor in front of the LED volume is completely different. It makes it so much easier because you're actually in the world. You see the scenery, you see the environment. It's not a green screen, it's not a tennis ball. You don't have to work hard to envision it. It's there and you just get to feel it and experience it and enjoy it and then create magic with it. The world that it creates has such different textures but at the same time looks completely real. I was encouraged to experiment and to bring as many different things as I wanted to the table. So I was really curious to test out different textures and different types of textiles and see how they would react with the feedback of the virtual wall. I think being involved in the production meetings and really understanding that technology and how it will look for each scene that we can take into mind if there's a lot of greens, if there's a lot of pinks or reds and how that will reflect off the face and pick up different pigments. The sky's the limit and it's, it's so fantastic. It's, it's really great. Honestly, I'm just absolutely astounded by it. I was so interesting to see that once our knight yesterday was kneeling, he got up and as he gets up, the whole set just kind of comes up with him. I was just completely blown away. You couldn't tell where the screen started or ended. Uh, we created eight completely different from each other and brand new worlds. And to do that in a week's time is like totally mind blowing.